Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Um, good morning. Here we are in uh, the end of April now. I think we're this will be Tuesday the 30th, I believe, that we're, uh, we're done. Oh, uh, yeah, that sounds uh, right. That so sounds right. Uh, very end of April, heading into May, and lots of cool stuff coming up for May for you. And we're heading over to with our leaders group to France and... Um, then uh, Aiden comes oh, back. Oh, you've got to be getting excited for that. <laughs> yep. We come back and um, Aiden graduates from high school. And, uh, oh, wow. So it's going to be quite fun. And he's, you know, gotten some nice honors. And he's, um, um, I don't know if I shared, but he's part of it at his school, uh, part of uh, what's called DECA, which is a business uh, club, basically. Right, and he's been very successful in that, yeah. it seems like. Yeah. Um, and they have, uh, this is uh, throughout all the high schools around the world, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and so they have a variety of different categories. And then uh, they invite kids. And what you do is you compete at your school. Mm -hmm. Then you compete in your region or state. Then you compete nationally in the United States. And then you compete internationally. Right. Uh, so he wanted his school, wanted his state, and uh, is a top in the top ten of the United States. That's amazing. Um, Good for him. And so now he's off to the international. Uh, which where which, will that be this year? This year, last year they had it in Orlando, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think the I think the people. <laughs> who put these on, uh, like uh, one, warm weather in the United States. <laughs> um, and they do it around tourist areas mm, uh, for, all right. these, for all these kids. And there's like 20,000 kids that come. Right. Uh, well, and, and the area has to be able to accommodate that influx of people right. as well, and, and right? have the big uh, you know conference center. So they're going to Anaheim. Uh, How fun. So he'll go in the West Coast this year, and he's getting ready. And preparing and then last year he was in the uh, top 10 uh, of the international mm -hmm. and, uh, and he's just very gifted and and has a heart and is but, his plan to study business at Baylor as well he's going into business school he's already been accepted um, excellent and he's applying for what they call an accelerated program mm. is it the business fellows business fellows or something like that where they move him into higher level classes faster. Um, yeah, I and, bet he, I bet it's the business fellows. Joshua was a part of that. Yeah, and it's a him. great program. So he's excited about that, and he'll he'll do really. He'll be a great uh, businessman, mostly because he has a heart to seek God's wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fun for him to learning how to process seeking God's wisdom and understanding what God has to say about things. And you know, I I keep telling him. I said, you know, as a believer. Um, we we have the privilege of having uh, the one that actually knows the answers. <laughs> right, right. Um, and I see, it's not, and this is what we're trying to say about hearing God's voice, is that it's not just theological, biblical, you know, truth. Mm -hmm. It's it's biblical truth because he speaks it and it's true. It's about life. And then I'll apply it to your situation because mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> Uh, and I said, why would you not learn how to do that? Um, Absolutely. So if you're, if you're going to go into business, the best thing you can do is have God guide you through it because he knows more than you. <laughs> so, Absolutely. So he and he really both he and Joshua was like, yeah, you know what? It's true. So why not? Why would yeah. I not learn that? It's going to be fun for them to have each other at school. Yeah. I love that they're both going to be there together. Yeah. So we'll uh, enjoy his uh uh, time, then he'll spend the, the rest of the summer with us, and then he'll go to Baylor. And then uh, 
we know it'll quite not be the same because it's been nice the last couple of years. We've actually he's been living in our house, right, uh, with uh, his mom and dad. So uh, we that's been, been a sweet gift for all of you, yeah, right? Yeah, and we just it's always fun, you know, because we get to. Yeah, and I keep helping people with their role as grandparents is, you know, just be available to do life with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's plenty of opportunity with their stuff where if they realize that they have somebody that they can process with, mm-hmm. to, just like we're talking about right now about, um, you know, you having other people join you is you get the privilege of joining them, not to tell them what to do. But rather, let's go seek God together and let and talk it through. Let's process it through. And what do you know? And what's the next step? And what's true? Right. Uh, and because of that, uh, it happens a lot. And Aiden and I mm-hmm. and, and have a, lots of great discussions. And I get to take him. He loves sports, so I get to take him to the Bronco games and the Nuggets games and the Coors, you know, baseball games. And uh, those are just great moments of enjoying just itself mm-hmm. all by itself, but also talking. Right. About stuff, you know, that's happening for him. So I love even as you're saying that, I'm just reminded um, I was spending some time in Timothy this morning and I was just reminded of the beauty of the role that Lois and Eunice played in Timothy's life. And that's exactly what you're describing right now. And um, and I think there is such a privilege and an honor to being both parent and grandparent and and great grandparent and having that role of influence um, to intentionally disciple your children and grandchildren, as well as to take those stolen moments, the unintentional that you're, I mean, you're intentional in spending time with them, but just as life happens and you're building that relationship with them and you're passing your faith onto them simply by living it out loud, right? Yeah. And having those discussions with them. And it's a beautiful honor and privilege. Yeah. Yeah. And it's neat, the, as we talked about hearing God's voice, you know, that's one of our questions that he's learned and he does and he processes, you know, what's God saying to you? Mm-hmm. Um, so he understands that I don't need to figure this out and I don't need to say, here's my plan. God, would you bless it? It's like, well, well let's just go ask him. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and I'll confirm it and I'll give you some input. And, um, you know, but if if we're seeking God's will, God will tell us personally his will. And he said, use the privilege I've brought you is use other people to go to unity and confirmation. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, use your spouse if you're married. In his case, you know, it's use your close friends, uh, use use us, uh, let us be your inner circle. Um, mm-hmm. and, he, and, he, and he learns, and by the way, they appreciate that when he comes to us, we're not going to tell him what to do. Right. Uh, it's like, well, here's what you should do. It's like, okay, tell me, talk to me about it. What do you know to be true? What is God saying mm-hmm. to you? Where are you with it? Okay, here's some ideas. Here's some thoughts. Here's a question. Uh, look at it this way and then uh, uh, go process it further and or this next step that you need to find out, you know, what happens um, and then come back and talk about it, you know. And so mm-hmm. uh, that's what we've been talking about here is how do you involve others? Uh, we went through, uh, you know, Second Peter uh, chapter 1 and said, you know, God said, don't let it be private interpretation. Don't do this by mm-hmm. yourself. You need others. And and I think part of the body, the, the function of the body, is by bringing in others, We it prevents us from getting distorted mm-hmm. and skewed away from convincing yourself that, right. yeah, I think I'm, I'm hearing right, I'm hearing right, I'm hearing right. But you wind up justifying that when God says, actually, I built it so that you actually involve others um, and invite them in. And by the way, the key is you got to have others that have a heart to go to go to me. Right. And help, right. help you go to me. That so, not just want to share their own opinion, but they want to seek God in it with you. Right. right. Um, and yeah. then he said, uh, so invite them in your inner circle and, and let it be public, so to speak, and process it. Why would you not? Um, and by the way, he says that... Um, the unity would have to come from you personally as well. Mm-hmm. So are you confirmed in your spirit? So if somebody else is saying, which we'll actually talk about here, what what, 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 what do they do when they disagree? Mm. Uh, well, they just say, just keep going. Because uh, it has to settle into you. And you're, <laughs> you're, you're the significant player in that process of going right. to unity of the spirit. So just because other people are saying something, 
it, it's not the answer. It's just, well, then I need to keep going until I get confirmed. And, right. And, and, and what you want people around you is ideally to have an honest disagreement, but mm -hmm. we're willing to seek God together and maybe we're not quite right. And, right. and that's okay. Um, the key is, and, you, and we talked about this last time with the story in Luke, is that if they're either... Um, stubborn, I, I, I need you to do what I say because I think I know more than you, or I'm skeptical, or I'm uh, ridiculing you, or I'm coming against you because you need to be doing what I want, um, mm. or I don't even think you can get there. God says you got to get them out of the room. Uh, right. That's not the people you want around them, and just, just don't bring them in. Um, you don't have to judge them, but don't but don't include them right, right. in debate and fight. Um, okay, so this next the next one we're going to talk about today is, um, well, what about where there is a honest disagreement? Mm -hmm. We both are seeking God, and we somehow are seeing things differently. Uh, could right. be could be you and your spouse, could be you and your inner circle. Uh, okay. Uh, let's look at it because God tells us how to do it. Uh, go to Acts 15, uh, verses 1 to 6. So this is in the con sure. context of everybody involved here um, has a heart to seek God, but there's a real disagreement. And, and we'll actually find out how, how sh what's called a sharp disagreement. So <laughs> we really disagree on this. So go, go ahead. All right. And certain men came down from Judea and taught the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Therefore, when Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and dispute with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, describing the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy to all the brethren. And when they had come to Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all things that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying, it is necessary to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. Yeah. So um, uh, in this scenario, uh, you know, Paul and Barnabas, uh, actually they're, they're, they've been staying at a Gentile church, Antioch, mm -hmm. um, purposely because God said, stay here. And disciple this church, and these are Gentiles, so they're they don't have any Jewish background; uh, they're just pure Gentiles, and uh, and so they've been teaching them salvation uh, is receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, and then learn to follow the work of the Holy Spirit and the life of the Holy Spirit, um, and because uh, you know both Paul and Barnabas would have been Jewish, people around them would also he would be Jewish and they're they're not separated you know in terms of right. well you guys are Jewish and we're Gentiles and we're just going to deal with the Gentiles it's like hey we're just doing all this together and and sure you join us and we we want you to join us and uh, what happened is that uh, the the ones that were Jewish um, said there's something we know that you need to consider in what you're saying and what you're doing and how you're doing it. And that is this, mm -hmm. that, um, and by the way, uh, the Messianic Jew knows this better even than typical uh, evangelicals. And that is right. when you're saved, you step into the covenant. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to be blessed to be a blessing because Christ has come to give you life and give it to you super abundantly and to, and to make all things work together for good. Um, so, they understood that. And they said, since it's a step into the covenant, then the sign of the covenant is circumcision. Right. So there, uh, why is there? So a this is a big deal. So it's a big deal. And there's a difference around, you can, and, and you can understand it, is that, is what they're saying is true? Yes. How they're, how they're saying it should be carried out is where the dispute is, mm -hmm. uh, is because of our paradigm, the Jews, we've been used to the sign of the covenant being the circumcision. So both, yes, receive Jesus. So they're not arguing that point at all. Right. Yes, receive Jesus. Um, and then 
everybody should be circumcised as a confirmation sign of the covenant. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paul now Paul, by the way, is a Pharisee, right? And 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 it's listed. And you can read this in in Philippians chapter three. He said he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, taught by the the best theologian there ever mm-hmm. was in the in the Hebrew. Um, so of anybody that could have said, yeah, you know what, that really probably is right, because he walked with the Holy Spirit. At it, he said no. Um, he said no. That's not. It's not a mechanical thing. Mm-hmm. Don't lay that on to people as you have to do it. His argument was it's it's a it's a circumcision of the heart, mm. and Christ performs mm. that with your mark right. being. And so circumcision, he said, is a mark, but it's of the heart. And he said it'll be obvious <laughs> if you're walking in the Spirit, living in the covenant. Mm-hmm. And you're marked that way, and you and you identify, and everybody knows it, you know. And and um, and he actually, interesting enough, he writes about this later. This is this is uh, early. He writes about this later when he's in the what's called the prison epistle. So it's about thirty years later, and he's been teaching people this truth. Uh, he writes about it in Colossians chapter two. He said circumcision, yes, it's a mm-hmm. step into the covenant. But it's it's a circumcision of the heart, and Christ is right. the one who performs it, right? And that's what he's arguing. Okay, so he's arguing one way. Um, here's what I believe is God's will, and um, here's what I've heard. The Jews are saying what? Well, we've heard different. Now they're walking with the Holy Spirit too, and and um, mm-hmm. we hear differently, and we think okay. Now there's a couple things about it. Um, was it a real disagreement? It was, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> it was a real disagreement. And, and they were passionate about it. That was, this was important to them because they wanted to represent the covenant well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it wasn't, it says not only was it a disagreement, he, it, it's, it's described here as a sharp disagreement. Mm-hmm. We really disagree on this. Now, they're, they're, right. they're all seeking God, but they really disagree. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Uh, now, um, Paul... One thing Paul didn't do is say, I think I'm hearing in the spirit. I think you're hearing in the flesh. <laughs> right. Because that's kind oh, of. Oh, that's interesting. That, yeah. That, that's kind of a, of a argument that we can use. And we see this with couples is that, well, I've heard and I'm in the spirit. And because you're, you're disagreeing and it's a strong disagreement. Right. You're, you're obviously in the flesh, so you need to get with it. Um, right. And that's, and I'll hear, um, you know, I spend more time talking to the women, but I uh, definitely hear women saying, well, I don't necessarily, I know I'm hearing this from God and he's not agreeing with me. So I think he's just not taking the time to listen. Right. That's right. You know, so either I'm, he, that he's not here or he's hearing in the flesh or he's not taking the time to listen. Yeah. And a lot of times we'll hear both of those. Right. Yeah. And, and so, um, Paul even approached this uh, well. He says, um, actually, it doesn't really matter if you're in the flesh, I'm in the flesh. Um, I'm not going to go down that path. I don't need to determine that. Mm -hmm. But I also, I can't agree with you yet because in my spirit, I don't have confirmation that that's true. And of course, they're saying the same thing. Well, in my spirit, I don't have confirmation. Okay, that's okay. Um, so I tell you what, let's all go to Jerusalem and process this with the disciples and the apostles. Mm-hmm. Um, we've come as far as we can. We have a real disagreement, but would it be okay if we just at the moment release it and let's go there and let and process it more with some other believers who have a heart to hear God? Right. Yeah, sure. Let's go do that. Um, and so they all said, now there's an indicator that they met the critical condition, and that is this. When you have a disagreement, it's it's okay. Mm-hmm. Go as far as you can. Don't debate it. Don't fight it any further because they said, you know that we can't get any further with it. It's okay. Now invite other people into the process. But in order to do that, um, I have to have a heart and you have to have a heart to seek God's will and answer this conflict. Mm -hmm. which he will, and he has an answer for it. And I just have to have a heart to receive it. 
if I if I say, look, my position is right, and I've heard and you, what, you, what you just said, I've heard from God, and I'm mm-hmm. spiritual, and you're not, until you do <laughs> what I want. And interesting enough, that very argument says you're in the flesh. Exactly, because uh, you're staying in self and pride, right? Yeah, as opposed to, well, okay, we disagree. I, I'm not going to change my mind at the moment, which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I got to hold hold to what's true for me, but let's go seek God together. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, great. Um, and that's a condition, by the way, because if you don't, you can't get there because it has to be ultimately done in the kingdom by the Holy Spirit showing you the truth. And you got to have a heart to do that. So they did. Now, here's a another critical piece. While they went, which, by the way, is a, quite a walk, you know, probably a, a five, six day walk. Uh, what were they doing? They were talking and walking in joy, yeah, enjoying each other's company, not letting the conflict ruin everything. Uh, they were um, uh, uh, involved with together. They're all walking together, mm-hmm. and they're all sharing with these uh, other uh, locations the joy of walking with God. And so, what they said is, "We've gone as far as we can." Mm-hmm. We can live with the disagreement, and we're not going to let it ruin our day, our night, our week, right? Uh, and cause us to be like, we got to get there, we got to get there, we got to get the resolve, and, and we and we don't care about anybody else's. And yeah, relax, you know. Uh, okay. Uh, and what Linda and I say is, we just don't yet know God's will. Mm-hmm. And so that's okay. Uh, but in the meantime, you can still have joy. And by the way, right. you can have joy with the person that you disagree with, right? Um, if they if they have a heart to go too, so they did. So they had joy, didn't ruin their time. They go, and then they go to the disciples and the and apostles and say, we have a disagreement. And so basically what, what the apostles said is, okay, Paul, what are you hearing? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm hearing this, and I believe this, and here's why. And Okay, uh, Pharisees, what do, you th- what do you believe? Well, I believe this and think this. And okay, they're different. Um, and then in verse 6, read verse 6 again, because that's, that's kind of the critical uh, verse. Now, the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. Yeah, well, let's consider. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And the word consider is let's go to God and seek his wisdom, his insight. Because we talked about if you you ask for wisdom, God says what? I'll give it to you. That'll give it liberally. Okay. (laughs) Hey, everybody. And the apostles say, everybody, are you willing for all of us to go to God together? And let's see what he has to say. Yep, Mm -hmm. we are. Okay. Um, We, they said, we actually can't figure this out. You, you both make really good points, mm-hmm. uh, but God knows. So let's go to God. And they did. They considered the matter, listened, and then they went to God. God, what do you have to say? And then God speaks to them and says, it's just Christ. It, mm-hmm. is, it is covenant, but it's the circumcision of the heart. Um, that's my answer. Do not add anything to salvation. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the and the receiving of Jesus Christ and and so they come back and said God said, and here's why. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, it's true, but here's how it plays out. And the Pharisee said, Okay, okay, got it. We got it. Okay, excellent, no problem. Um, I received that. Okay, why? In their spirit, it was confirmed. Right. See, see the difference. It's 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 not like well, okay, fine. We'll do that, I guess, because, no, they had confirmation in the spirit because why? They had a heart to receive it. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you're in disagreement, uh, particularly around things that you think you're hearing, no problem. What? Stay with it. Stay with it. Now, the key is those people that disagree with you, do they have a heart to go with you to seek God's answer and get confirmation? See, if they say no. Right. If they say, and I'm not willing to, I've already decided, you can you can just ignore it. Mm-hmm. Literally just ignore it. Because it just ought, they said all by themselves, I'm not willing to go to God. I've decided on my own. And God says, Well, that's not gonna work. Right. You'll you'll never get my confirmation because you don't have a heart to receive it. Um, so don't why do you care about disagreement? It's okay. I'll get you the answer. And Linda and I, again, look at it. We have disagreements. Um, and we can. she can say, I've heard. And I can say, I've heard. And um, it's that, well, we just don't yet know God's wills. And, and the question, this is an interesting question. And the Pharisees and, and Paul had to answer this. Are you neutral? Mm-hmm. Neutral mean are you willing to receive God's answer? 
even right. if it's different than yours. Right. And we both say, you know, sometimes like, yeah, not really. <laughs> okay, well, before we even go seek God's answer, we got to go to neutrality. So I'm willing to receive his will, even if it's different than mine. Right. I'm not changing my mind per se, but I'll let him change my mind. Yeah. Um, well, and I think it's important to point out here, even, you know, you and Linda both are coming from a very pure spot seeking God's will. And yet at the moment you're hearing two different things. Yeah. And sometimes there is purpose in that. Can you talk a little bit about some of the purpose in why you may be hearing two different things at the moment? Because I think that's an important thing for people to realize, too. It's not that one of you is hearing right and one is hearing wrong. The spirit can also cause you to disagree for a moment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there's a couple of uh, reasons for that. One is timing. Mm -hmm. Is that um, if you agreed at the moment, you would then follow. And I'm not ready for you to yet move, take a move. I'm not ready for you to take a step yet. Uh, right. So I'm doing this purposely to stall you because uh, other right, right. things have to be put in place. And because they haven't you, taken place yet. <laughs> yeah, and because you're, you, you know that you don't proceed without unity, I'm really involved in this not being unified because it's not the time yet mm -hmm. uh, stay with it another thing is that um, there there is more for you to receive and understand and I'm using your uh, lack of unity which is which is from his perspective again good because there is where you discover my will and I'll command blessing Psalm 133 um, there's more that you need to receive Mm -hmm. and um, it's okay. And as you process it, you're going to find out, kind of like with Paul and the uh, disciples, what did they discover? They both understood the same thing. Mm -hmm. And he says, I, I, I want you to really grab hold of that. Yes, it's a step into the covenant. And I do want you to, to receive that, and I do want you to teach that. Mm -hmm. But don't get caught up in the form of it. That's where you got a little bit sideways. Right. Uh, so he had to keep processing. It wasn't like, oh yeah, Paul's here and right, and you're wrong. No, you're you're ninety percent right. You got ten percent more. There's a little to, more I want to teach little, you. Yeah. Little <laughs> more you got to process. And so and see from our perspective is, well, we don't even worry about it. It's like it's okay. Mm -hmm. He's going to teach us more. There's more to understand. There's never a thought of, well, I'm right and you're not. Uh, it's that I actually I I. Uh, appreciate and encourage and want you to stay true to what you think, feel, and believe. Mm -hmm. If it disagrees, it's okay. God's using it. And a lot of it is around my own heart, is am I willing to surrender that and not get stubborn about I think I know right because I can use what I call the God card. Right. Well, I heard and you didn't. Uh, as opposed to, well, I'm okay if, if I'm not quite right either. Uh, mm -hmm. Why? Because I want to know God's will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and and so disagreement is process as far as you can. Uh, don't let it ruin your day. Um, and then go bring other some other people involved to assist considering it together. And considering mm -hmm. it is let's let's all go to God and He'll let us know. Yeah. Uh, and it's really a fun, enjoyable thing. And we don't let disagreement stop us and by the way what Linda and I have worked on and I, I personally have violated it only a few, few times <laughs> is um, we don't act until we're in unity right uh, and the, and a couple times that I did like I, I did a car and I can share that sometime but um, <laughs> it was it was a big disaster and and I knew I kind of knew it right. and, and afterwards God said you know you teach unity you know, and, and yet you just bulldozed. And, and you and you violated that out yep. of convenience. Mm -hmm. uh, and it wasn't even out of pride. It was just out of, you know, let's, let's just move, you know. Right. Uh, move on, you know, get going. And um, you were too much in a rush, and it cost you. Mm -hmm. So, Rich, remember, <laughs> do not act until you get to unity, and, and the Holy Spirit and your wife is as valid as yours, you know. So, right. So be careful. And that can go both ways because sometimes, you know, the other spouse can be too passive in just, you know, yeah, just go ahead. If you feel really strongly about that, you must have heard. It doesn't really matter that I haven't heard that's right. that confirmation yet. That's right. And that's not doing anyone any favors either. No, no. And that's why you wind up with poor decisions 
Mm-hmm. Um, and and you kind of what I call abrogate it and say, well, you're you seem to be uh, better at this, you know, in business than I am. So whatever you say, I'll do. And God says, no. Mm-hmm. Um, process. What are you sensing? See, it could be it's a spiritual thing. And this happens with Linda. She, there's a lot of things she doesn't know about her business, but I'll talk about it. She'll say, I don't feel good about that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, she doesn't even know why at the moment. But I've learned that God's saying, pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> pay attention. Um, I'm trying to use her to get you to move mm-hmm. further because you're not quite there yet. Yep. And don't, don't do this yet because you have a legitimate difference. I'm mm-hmm. using that difference to get you truth. You have a heart to go. Let's go. So uh, I would just encourage everybody to don't be afraid of conflict. You you want right. you want people around you that have a heart to go to God with you. If if they're in conflict with you and they don't care and they're stubborn, you actually don't want them involved because that's that's for sure in the flesh. Right. And you and you can't get there. Um, so um, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, great. Uh, Uh, teaching really about conflict and it's okay Uh, and you will work it all the way through to unity uh, so that we can confirm it particularly as we uh, open that up to other people we're going to have differences of thought we're going to have difference of opinion but you're using it I pray that we'll embrace the beauty of that and the joy of that knowing that you will get us there 100% of the time all the time if we have a heart to go and so we praise you and we thank you for that and we'd learn it really well in Christ's name amen Amen. Well, thank you so much for sharing, Rich. Such good insight on all of this. Um, if you have questions about today's podcast, be sure to send them in to us at questions at abideministries.com. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Yep. We'll see you then. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.